Hey guys, welcome to this week's show. Before we get started, I just wanted to preface the video by saying there's going to be some clips in here that may seem insensitive and may seem like we don't care and may seem like uh, we're not politically correct, which we're not politically correct. And I just wanted everybody to know we take the virus seriously. We are in self-quarantine right now for the next four weeks because of the New Zealand laws and we don't want to spread the virus or spread anything or be a part of loading down the, the medical system with our stupidness and our redneck ways. Well, remember that when you're watching what you're seeing today, that was filmed two or three weeks ago. And so the new what's going on in the world today does not reflect what was going on in the world when the video came out. So keep that in mind and and enjoy the video and, and come with a sense of humor because we laugh at everything. We cry, we laugh and, and we, we live life and we want to be authentic and we want to be real. And that's why we didn't cut these clips from the video. And we look forward to all the comments and we look forward to the haters as well commenting because we know we're going to get some hate on this one. So enjoy the show. Previously on Sailing Zatara. We finish up in Auckland and sail north back to Marsden Cove to get hauled out to check on the anti-foul coating that was put on back in November. I tell you a story about me and you Out on the water, surrounded by the blue They scream that only I'll be saved They told us off the line that I just let it float away Yeah, I let it float away I let it float away I let it float away Float away, float away Yeah, I One of the main reasons we hauled the boat out here in uh, Marston Cove Marina down here in New Zealand is because we needed an anti fell A young man from Charleston, South Carolina named Matt Kaufman got a hold of me through our YouTube channel and said, hey, I've got a product I think you'll like. My dad developed it and now I'm out here pushing it and, and developing it and trying to make it a, a winner for his family. What's the name of your company, Matt? Magic anti Fouling. Magic anti Fouling. Is it magical? From what we've seen over the last seven years, it's more than magical. He called me up and he said, hey Keith, I'll uh, I'll pay for your boat to be hauled out. I'll pay for it to be sandblasted down. I'll pay for three coats of epoxy to be put on there and I'll pay for my stuff to be put on there and the product. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It's on me. If it does work, it's on me. But I need somebody to believe in this product and he obviously believes in it. Though That got my attention. I mean, that's entrepreneurialism at its finest. It inspired me. It motivated me. Not that I was getting something for free, but that I love when people will go out there and risk everything for something they believe in. It took just a few days for preparation and full application. Then we flew to the States for the winter. So getting hauled out of the water, this was the first time we got to see the bottom of the boat and how the magic anti foul worked. We were excited and nervous at the same time to see if this was gonna be the product. So we just got the boat out here at Marston again. We had uh, they're finishing up a few details we didn't have time to finish last time. The boat's been in the water about six, seven weeks now. You're sitting, and you can see if I had a rag, you can just this is the magic can I found. You can just wipe. There's no growth. It just everything just wipes off. Wow. Super slick. <laughs> Nothing's growing to it, even at the water line. It's just wipe it off. Oh, that's awesome. So I'm really pleased with that. Uh, man just <laughs> slicker than a baby's bottom. How long has it been in there? About six, seven weeks. Right magic on there. Magic anti-fail. <laughs> you don't know how to spell anti-fail? Anti yeah, that's good. Anti-fail. Oh, how's our prep speed? It looks good. There's no growth on that. 
It looks really good. Nice. So, I gotta change the zincs out. Yeah. Yeah, so the prop speed's working really good too. I mean, you can see there's no growth on here. And it's just been sitting in the marina, so it's uh, it's actually doing really well. Yeah, it hadn't even been moving. Isn't it worse to sit? Yeah. What about the lights? Did they put prop speed on the lights? They put uh, the light speed on the lights. Oh, yeah. They were supposed to. Well, I think they did. It yeah. feels like they did. What the heck is this? Makes you nervous walking under the boat. Oh, I don't understand that big white spot? That's one reason we're pulling out, so... The guys that put the, the anti-fail on, they did the rudders last because we had some water in the rudders. And so they are, they probably didn't get it sanded right or didn't get it the, the application done, but they're, they're fixing that. So yeah. they're going to fix that and, and the back of the boat. So yeah. there's some places, but, but everywhere else on the boat looks really good. Our plan was to stay up on the hard stand for a couple of days to get the final repairs done to the bottom. However, just an hour later, Effective immediately, we will move to alert level three nationwide. Just After 48 hours, the time required to ensure essential services are in place, we will move to level four. Okay. These wow. decisions will place the most significant restrictions on New Zealanders' movements in modern history. This is not a decision taken lightly, but it is our best chance to slow the virus and to save lives. Let me set out what this will mean for everyone in practical terms. Supermarkets, doctors, pharmacies, service stations, access to essential banking services will be available throughout New Zealand at every alert level. If you do not have immediate needs, do not go to the supermarket. We must give time for supermarkets to restock their shelves. There will be enough for everyone if we shop normally. Stock is not an issue in New Zealand. We will not run out of food. Non-essential businesses in New Zealand must now close. All indoor and outdoor events cannot proceed. In short, we are all now preparing as a nation to go into self-isolation in the same way that we have seen many other countries do. Staying at home is essential. It's a simple but highly effective way to constrain the virus. It denies it a place to go and will help give our healthcare system this a fighting happening. chance. To be absolutely clear, we are now asking all New Zealanders who are outside essential services to stay at home. Wow, that's all right. scary. They're like making too. Movie. They're making too big of a deal right there. They're just trying to scare no, you. Like, but, but regardless, it's happening. I know. It's happening. Wait, number four is happening? No, oh, it's gonna happen it's soon. Probably. Forty-eight hours. In forty-eight. They're going yeah, level three right now. So in forty-eight hours from now. So you got two days to get everything yeah. done. Will they put us in right? We're, yeah, we're gonna go back in the water. Will mm. they put us in right now? Yeah, we're gonna go back in right now. We're gonna fill up the diesel. We're gonna pop the tanks off. Fill up the jerry jugs. Fill up the jerry jugs, Gas diesel. Them. We're gonna be loaded up. So New Zealand just uh, called for phase three of this COVID-19 uh, deal. So we're on uh, lockdown. We've got 20, 48 hours to get back to our homes and get uh, tucked into our house. So the boat's going back in the water. We just got hauled out about, what, an hour ago? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of weird. It's like we're in a movie or something. Playgrounds are closed, schools are closed. But if it does get bad, let's hope it gets like zombie apocalypse bad. It'd just be cool. I'm kidding. I hope I hope something good happens. I find a cure, become a billionaire. There you go. That sounds good. Yeah. All right, back in the water. Not too fast. Super small. Uh, 
Yes. No, 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 wait, wait. Now look where your line's behind you. So well, it's going to hit you and not come to the boat. <laughs> All right, there you go. Now, like I said, throw it to me. Throw it out here. Look where you're throwing, just like you're throwing the football. Right. One hand, one hand. Just one hand. Just go. There you go. Good. Even though we live on a boat and we chose a lifestyle where we're often intentionally isolated from other people, the situation in the world right now is still so unbelievable to us. At the time of filming this, we weren't allowed to leave New Zealand waters, but we were allowed to cruise the islands and be on anchor. New Zealand is a strong nation of people, of fighters, and even though the world is locked down during this pandemic, the sun is still shining. I'd like to think it's an opportunity for us to spend time with our loved ones, because you just never know if that's going to be the last time you get. What's the, what's going on? What's the rules, like, starting tomorrow? Midnight tomorrow night, it's supposed to be um, in isolation at homes, no yeah. traveling. But on our boats, we can do whatever, right? On your little boats? Yeah. You, know, you just can't interact with anybody else. Yeah, you just, just, just can't meet up with any people. Yeah. You've got to stay from every, away from everyone. That, that's what you're trying to do is avoid conflict. Right, everyone. right. Like, can we travel and, like, anchor out in remote anchorages and stuff like that? Y'all don't have any problem with that? So we come back here and then go to the grocery store. Yeah. All right, guys. Today we're here with Phil Horton from UK Sailmakers in Pongaree, New Zealand. Did all the canvas work. Uh, Phil built me my stack pack and uh, is out here fitting some of the cushions. And I talk talk about great service. These guys have done a great job and, and done first class work on what we're doing. So if you guys get to Fongaray, check these guys out. When we see people who do a great job, we want to we want to promote those companies. We want to promote people who do good service. So. Phil at UK Sailmakers and Fongaray is great. If you've got canvas work or sail work to do on your boat, check those guys out because they'll do you a good job. So talk about your life now. Uh, well, the coronavirus is being annoying because we can't go to places we want to go and <laughs> things we want to do we can't do. And um, I'm still going to skate today, even though New Zealand is on lockdown, because I don't care. We talked to the police. It's not till tomorrow. Yeah, that's stage four. That's when they yeah. totally... You still skate. You just got to skate by yourself. Yeah, you got to skate. You got to skate by yourself, brother. If yeah. I go to the skate park, then what? You can't. You can't go where there's less people. You have to self-isolate. Yeah. What if there's no one there? I guess you'd be okay if there's no one there, but you can't be if you have to 
stay yeah. two meters away from everybody. Two meters. Two meters. Which is three feet. Me. Which is what? Uh, three feet? Six, six feet? feet? Six a meter is three feet. feet. Yeah, that's six, what I said. Six, six but that's what I said. Uh, why you want white rice and... I've already boiled rice. For yeah, there should be some in that chair up there. So this is our last little trip we're doing. Going to Fonqueray before everything shuts, shuts down. down. Here comes the master and commander himself. Coronavirus 2020, coming at you live from New Zealand. <laughs> It's never happened before. I uh, know. I've never waited in line to get into the grocery store. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. Crazy. There's actually plenty of food here. I think they're just controlling how many people enter the store at one time. So we're not all getting in each other's way and touching each other and stuff. Keith has been eating granola and yogurt a lot lately, Greek yogurt. He's in love with it, but I can't ever find plain granola. It's got berries or coconut and stuff in it, and he doesn't like that. Hmm. That's really good. So we had enough, we had have enough food on the boat. I just thought might as well get some more necessities, bread and milk and stuff if we're gonna be sailing the aisles the islands for the next few weeks and not able to come to the store. groceries and tomorrow we're going cruising we're gonna get out of the marina and while they got the lockdown going on for four days four weeks here in, in New Zealand we are gonna go cruise out on the islands and stay on the hook for four weeks and kind of get the boat ready to go so hopefully by the time uh, four weeks is over people are starting to lift up travel bands and we can get to the islands yeah and we can start enjoying life again get to Tonga what do you think kiddos get to Tonga good idea yep and hopefully, the minute Tonga opens up, we're going to Tonga. We yeah. are going to go. Uh, Regardless if we've got boat work done? Well, no, we got to get that done. But, uh, so we've just got a few little things to clean up on the boat uh, when, we get, when, the, when, the, when the lockdown's over with. So we're looking forward to four weeks on the hook. Yes. And uh, oh. cruising around the islands of New Zealand. It's a little cold out, mm. but uh, better to be a little cold out on the hook than to be a little cold, cold in the marina. Yeah. It's chilly. Hey guys, welcome to this week's edition of the Q&A. Today joining me is my son Jack and he is going to answer a question that we get asked all too often is whatever happened to the Jack and Lily show? Lily was Jack's girlfriend for about two years. They had a long distance ro romance over online uh, and we finally got them together in Tahiti and she sailed with us for about six weeks and then after that, Jack, what happened? You guys broke up? We did break up. Broke up about four months ago. Why'd you guys break up? Long distance. Long distance sucks. It's uh, hard, but you can do it. It's just we were both living our separate lives, we're both sailing. Felt like we were missing out on too much, so that's what happened. And that's what happened. We want to we want to thank Lily for coming out to the boat, and it was a great time. And we still talk to them all the time. They're a wonderful family, and we look forward to seeing them again. And Jack, thanks for coming on the show today. You betcha, pal. <laughs> we want to thank him for taking time out of his busy schedule to join us, because you know he's. So busy keeping this going. Call of Duty can't wait. Call of Duty can't wait. All the friends can't wait. Time, time, time. All right, Jack, thanks for answering some questions. You got it. Jumping right into this week's Q&A, though, the first question is from Marcel D. Knowing what you know now, would you ever go back to the big house and the yard and all that stuff, or do you think you might just continue selling? Or is there some balance for your family in there somewhere? Well, Marcel D., that's a great question, and I tell you, 
we didn't know whether we wanted to go back or not. We didn't know whether we want to keep our land life, the, 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 the place we have in Montana. And right now, as it stands, we love being on the water. We, we don't see ourselves being back on land ever. And we've talked about possibly selling our place in Montana and just having the boat and maybe having a, a motor coach or an RV and because we don't know where all our kids are going to end up and then we just have a motor coach at some port down in Florida or somewhere where we could park the boat get in the motor coach and me and Renee could live in the motor coach and travel to see our family and friends but that's a great question this one's from Lynn Nugent how do you overcome the seasick I love boating can't stand the vomiting I feel so sick even taking the ferry well Lynn uh, Renee and Jack are about the only ones who get sick on the boat and they don't get sick but for a couple of days and what they do is they take meds uh, you know the, the seasick pills or whatever the patch they take that a couple of days before we make a passage and I always try to make a passage on a good weather window starting out calm even though I might get a little hairy down the road that way it gives everybody a chance to get their sea legs and we don't take off in bad weather or in big seas and because that just really ruins it but uh, that's a great question and, and some people never do overcome seasickness there's a lot of people we know that are fly two wives fly two husbands that they just can't get over the seasickness so they have to fly to where the boat's anchored and, and enjoy life that way thanks for watching the show and thanks for asking the question Lynn all right the next question is from Nuff said Keith how do you feel about the Volvo engines now you are a fan of the Anmars like me, but are you still thinking of doing an engine change over to the Anmars? And how hard will it be to get them out and the Anmars in? Well, enough said. That's a good question. I do like Anmar engines. Here recently we had the, the problem with the Volvo, the starboard Volvo engine looked at by several different Volvo mechanics up and down the coast of New Zealand. And we finally got one I think may have gotten it fixed. We hadn't run the engine over five or six hours yet to, to see long term to see if it really did fix it. There were some sensor issues that needed to be place, replaced, but I hope that fixed it. Yes, I would like to have Yanmar engines and there is a place to get those engines out through the bedroom hatches. And I think you have to take them apart piece by piece and, and put the block in and then all the accessories on it to, in the heat exchangers because I don't think they would fit through the if all in one piece so you, you'd have to dismantle them and then assemble the Yanmars down in there as well but that's uh, that's how you get those engines in I believe next question we're all moving right along that's in, this is from Lauren Serpa I know it's an old video but tell me about your container size weight cost please when we sold our old boat uh, the old Zatara boat in uh, in Australia we took all of our stuff and put it in a container in Australia because we didn't know where we were going to buy a new boat at but we knew we was going to buy a new boat so that container sat in australia until we were ready to buy a new boat which is this boat and once we had this boat found we immediately dispatched a company in australia to pick that container up take it to the shipyards put it on a boat and ship it to greece that was a, a two and a half meter by uh by uh six meter eight meter container the, the smallest one and it was a uh, sea freight container, a Connex container, and I think that cost like $3,000 to ship it across the ocean. And then, of course, Greg tacked on another $1,000 to get it imported into the country and all those kind of things. But that's, that's what we did. And it took about eight weeks to get the container from Australia to Greece. So uh, I hope that helps. Great question. Next question up is from Anthony Kraft. Uh, last season, I thought I heard mention of combining your passions for sailing and flying. Would you care to elaborate on that? And so glad to have you back. Well, Anthony, we are glad to be back. So my two passions in life were ranching and flying and now sailing. And I would love to figure out a way to, to still fly. It's not as big a passion anymore to me because flying is very expensive. Flying costs lots of money. Owning airplanes, helicopters, jets, all that kind of stuff costs lots of money. And unless you have the cash flow to roll that, and which I don't anymore, uh, it's just it's just not uh, feasible for me anymore. I, you know, I flying just to be flying is not as fun to me as it used to be. If I had a mission to fly, it would be a lot funner. But I'd like to figure out a way to to uh, combine aircraft, maybe even get into selling airplanes or jets or something like that one day, and, and maybe selling yachts too, selling uh, blue water cruising boats, only boats that I know I would recommend and that I know would do what families need them to do out here on the blue water and, and the same with aircraft. But uh, that's a great question, Anthony, and thanks for watching the show. Hey guys, that concludes this week's Q&A. Thanks for watching. And if you like what you're seeing, please hit the subscribe button and the bell. Share it with your friends on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and all your social media outlets. 
and make sure you like the videos and if you dislike them that's just a good just make sure you hit that dislike button twice that'll give you extra credit and extra points for being smart once again i look forward and we look forward to seeing you guys out there on the water tune in next time as we set sail for some social isolation